February 1837, Kerch, Crimea. After several years of exhaustive excavation, trying to find a way inside the giant earthen mound, archaeologist Anton Ashik and his weary team of explorers finally opened the hidden entrance to one of the greatest megalithic marvels ever discovered between Europe and Asia, what has come to be known as the Royal Kurgan. As a light pierced through the dank darkness, what Anton saw next probably left him utterly speechless. He would later describe this once-in-a-lifetime experience as follows. Quote, Huge walls form the entrance to the tomb. The mound consists of a tomb and a long corridor made of rusticated slabs. The burial chamber is built on a rock. In plan, it is almost square. The walls consist of ten rows of masonry. At the level of the fifth row, they gradually turn into a stepped circular dome. The chamber height is almost nine meters." End quote. Now, Kurgan is a Russian word that means burial mound, and this mound stands almost 65 feet high. Many layers of clay, algae, rubble stones cover the inner structure beneath and protect it from erosion by atmospheric precipitation. The entrance is located on the south side of the mound, and the stonework is made of this yellowish limestone. In 1856, a Swiss artist named Carlo Basoli visited the Royal Kurgan and painted his experience. When you look at this photograph, you will see that Carlo was seated deep inside the far end of the mound in what is known as the tomb, and he was painting the view he saw looking out towards the southward entrance. In this photograph, notice the precision, mortarless architecture. The long corridor made of rusticated slabs and how it gradually merges into the circular-shaped corbelled dome. Archaeologist Anton Ashak also wrote, quote, If you look back from the chamber of the tomb, you will find that the exit appears to be much further than the distance to the tomb outside. This effect was achieved by the unequaled width and non-parallelism of the walls of the Dromos. It is likely that the ancient Greeks sought to achieve this effect on purpose. The path to the afterlife is close, but the way out of it seems so far." End quote. Now Anton obviously assumed, based on his testimony, that the ancient Greeks built this structure. This is most likely due to the fact that Kerch was founded approximately 2,600 years ago as an ancient Greek colony. Yet, Kerch is considered to be one of the most ancient cities in all of Crimea. And archaeological digs near the city have ascertained that the area had been inhabited as far back as the 17th centuries BC. While mainstream academia assumes that the Royal Kurgan was the final resting place of a ruler of the Bosporan Kingdom somewhere between 400 and 300 BC, but could it be much, much older? Is it the massive size of the Royal Kurgan that prompted archaeologists to conclude that this structure was built by and for a king, hence naming it? as such in the first place. Anton Ashik made it no mention, and I have found no record that a sarcophagi or skeletons were found during his excavation of 1837. Was this mound completely plundered in antiquity? At the beginning of the 19th century, there were apparently more than 2,000 mounds dotting the Kerch Peninsula, but sadly today most of them have all but disappeared. Now estimated to be as old or older 
than the Royal Kurgan by mainstream academia, almost all of these other burial mounds really appear inferior in their construction methods as they use mostly wood, uh, rocks, and mud. Not the precision mortalist architecture we see with the Royal Kurgan Mound. This brings me to my next question. Why is the Royal Kurgan Mound so spectacularly different from the other mounds of the region? Now, some might be quick to answer that these other burial mounds must have been made for the commoners of the day. But again, this cannot be the case as these other mounds are thought by mainstream academia to be the tombs of the Scythian royalty who ruled the plains of the region some 3,000 years ago. Inside these other Kurgans have been found vast amounts of pure gold objects depicting primal battles between monsters and animals. Many of the mummies unearthed inside were found covered in tattoos and clearly members of the ruling class of that day. Are these other Kurgans the Scythians' best attempt to emulate the splendor of the royal Kurgan, similar to maybe what we see in Peru? where the small rough stone and clay mortar construction style is built around the superior precision mortarless architecture that seems to predate it. Now some of the components of the Royal Kurgan look eerily similar to that of other ancient superstructures found around the world. Two that come to mind are the Grand Gallery inside the Great Pyramid, where you can see incredible similarities. Another one is the uh, subterranean well of Santa Cristina in Sardinia. The similarities are striking. Archaeologist Anton Ashik made the intriguing comment that, quote, all blocks of the crypt and dromos were laid dry, without binder. In many places, traces of the instrument have been preserved on the walls, small rectangular grooves in the walls." End quote. Is Anton describing here the traces left behind from some form of lost technology that the ancient architects were using to build this megalithic masterpiece. Something else to mention here is that all over this region of the Black Sea have been found ancient skeletons possessing strange, elongated skulls, very similar to those seen in places such as Paracas, Peru. Many of these Black Sea elongated skulls seem to possess approximately 25% more cranial mass than normal human skulls. Now, cradle headboarding can alter the shape of a skull, but it cannot produce more cranial mass on a skull, as these elongated skulls appear to have. Elongated skulls such as these have been found near the area of the Royal Kurgan. Is there a connection between these ancient elongated skull people or humanoids and the precision megalith known as the Royal Kurgan? Could the Royal Kurgan have been built as the final resting place for one of these humanoids? So many questions, yet a few things are for certain. The Royal Kurgan is an ancient architectural masterpiece that holds many secrets and we are very lucky that it is still standing.